We're back again, and what we've got right here in front of me is a 1969 Volkswagen floor pan. You can tell by the giant rot holes that are in it that uh, this thing is in some pretty awful condition. So because these videos get some really, really good views, I decided I'm going to cover it one more time, but this time in a little bit greater depth to show how I turn this crappy old floor pan into this. Stick around and watch. Thanks, guys. If you enjoy my videos, you should check me out over on Patreon. It's an account I just started up over there, and it's going to show some of my non-video updates to some of my members. You can check out my progress on the CR500 and some of the other projects I've been working on, the stuff that hasn't quite made it to video status yet, or current things that I'm in progress of. So please, check me out over on Patreon, and Skeeter the Duck is there too. As I said, these floor pans are pretty badly rusted. You're looking at a pretty big hole back here in the battery section, which is pretty standard for a Volkswagen. They almost should have just come that way from factory, because that's what happens to them anyway. Up here in the passenger front foot area, it's also gone. We're looking at over in the driver's side foot area, it's also rusted completely through, with only the flange that mounts up to the heater channel. The bolts are still in it because they ripped out of the heater channel, because the heater channel was so rotted out too. We've also got a big hole in the back here, underneath what would be the back seat on the driver's side. So we're going to cut these floor pans out right along this line here. And once I've got that cut out, then we're going to clean it up and we're going to weld in some brand new ones that I have ordered for this car. Get it fixed and rebuilt and then it'll go back under this body. This body I've since replaced the heater channels on. and. Uh, other than a little superficial rust that's on it from the rain that we had recently, it's actually in really good solid shape and the doors close like they're supposed to. Everything is good on this car again. Just needs a good cleanup, a proper paint job, and a soon to be solid floor pan. Right, ducks? <laughs> they're my babies. The ducks will be helping today. They're always immensely helpful, especially Boomer. <laughs> you be a good boy, Boomer. What you doing with Geeter? Be good duck. <laughs> Why are you biting me? This one never fails. He's always biting. Biting and humping. Be a good boy. how you flip up a floor pan. Now yeah, looking at the bottom of the tunnel, I'm glad to see that there's no rust through the center of it all the way back to the frame horns and that underneath the uh, frame head area up front there's no rust there either. Nothing that's uh, not superficial anyway. Now that I've got this up in the air you'll see very easily where I need to cut. I gotta cut right along these seams and I've discovered that since my other videos it's a whole lot easier to hit it from the bottom because you can see exactly where you're supposed to be cutting from and what you don't want to cut through. You don't want to cut through this tunnel part and I've done that a couple times and I've had to patch it up. Several ways to do this. One you can do it with a handsaw if you're really a nut. Uh, two you can do it with a sawzall and when the floors are this rusty it'll, it'll cut through it like butter. Or a third thing you can do is with a plasma cutter and they may do a little bit of all the above just depends on uh, exactly what part of the floor pan I'm going to be cutting into and what I've got to deal with here. I think we're going to be pretty well off here. It shouldn't be too big of a deal. And I'm going to need to pull my trash can closer so I can start throwing in things like this.
now you get your air chisel and you make sure it's sharp it's got to be nice and sharp and this thing you can see how short the blade is I've been using that for a lot of folks wagon floor pans and I even use it to remodel the bathroom it chipped off all the old tiles and you want to get this lip that's in here this is the remaining piece of the floor pan that was still attached to the chassis so getting in here like this, and I don't think there's any other tool that does it better get in here and chip it off and it'll probably take less than 20 minutes to do both sides. Finished cleaning up this lip here. So what I'm going to do also is I'll acid treat that side, then I'll flip the pan over and we'll remove the lip from the other side. I descaled and wire brushed the bottom of the pan also and got off all the loose undercoating that was there which was amazing it just flaked off I could actually scratch it off with my fingernails this stuff is amazing just what it does to rust it will turn rust black and it will turn bare metal white as it etches it and sometimes the rust will even lift off the surface and bare metal will be exposed underneath but just the idea here is just to get it wet that was a really good time to clean up all the loose debris before we flip this pan back over to hit the other side because this is the stuff you're going to be stepping on. There's a lot of sharp edges in here that you really don't want to have going through your shoe. A piece of the old floor pan makes a great dust pan comparison of the old floor pans and the new floor pans. This one is a little dusty. Apparently it shipped that way. Must have been separate from this one wherever it was sitting in the uh, warehouse or maybe it was on top of the pile. Or maybe that's the way it came out of Brazil. <laughs> they are tremendously heavier in weight than the old ones are and I would imagine that that's because they've shed off so much of their material. In addition to that, they might be thicker. I've been told that these are extremely thick floor pans and these are the best ones that you can buy. So those are the ones we invested in. And that's what's gonna go up in here into that chassis. over how fast the acid has reacted with the rust. It turned it very, very black, and it's still currently reacting. It's not done yet. Uh, phosphoric acid is interesting because when it reacts with uh, rust, the rust becomes ferric phosphate, if I'm not mistaken, which is inert. Uh, water will not oxidize it, unless, of course, you chip through it down to the bare metal underneath. But it will not rust again. The only thing that will eat at it again will be, well, phosphoric acid, and it doesn't appear in the environment in uh, a large enough quantity to cause more damage. But this stuff is just awesome. I mean, it takes off rust like you can't imagine. The byproduct of the, uh, the process is water, which is if you can see the glare on it. I don't know if you can see it too much, but a lot of the dampness that you're seeing there is actually the water still evaporating from it. But we're gonna go ahead and treat up the other side in here after we knock that lip off. And then once that's done, we can flip the floor pan right side up again and uh, start welding in the floor pans, of course, once this all dries. This wasn't too bad up in there, but I hit it with my wire brush and it looks like this is about the last time I'm going to be using this one. 
Anyway, I got all the loose rust out of there. Gonna hit it with the acid now and let it sit. bad not bad <laughs> all right I gotta say that it looks pretty good those floor pans fit for the most part they're actually looks to be a little short on this side right about here they're not closing the gap as usually would be closed um, for some reason they always widen up back here I hammer these and stamp these and bang on them and the little hook that's underneath here that supports the pan in that spot I've tried adjusting that and for some reason they never want to sit in these corners but they are on the lip so that is where we're going to weld them to this side same way we did do a little hammering on this one to make it fit better and for the most part that gap is closed up tremendously front gap up here isn't so bad though it's nice and tight I am a little curious if this chassis is a, a little bent there's a possibility it could have been hit and maybe it's a uh, maybe something's just not straight on it anymore now, the customer that owns this chassis is uh, pretty tall like I am and uh, he requested that I take the seat track over here and I move it backwards so what I gotta do is I gotta bust out all the welds through here on this side and across here and take the entire seat track section and move it backwards and I'll probably get this bar in the front even with this line here that's what I did on one of the other cars that I had worked on and it worked out real nicely I was going to do that on the oval but because the oval actually has custom seats in it it didn't require Volkswagen seat tracks whatsoever. I took a couple measurements here, which is 15 and 3 eighths from this rail to this rail, and 15 and a half from here to here. It's interesting that it goes wider. I checked the uh, Volkswagen stock rail, and it's actually 15 and a half up front and 15 and 3 quarter in the back. So I think 15 and a half is going to be your average, probably where you need to be, and that's probably good information for anybody building a chassis that has to install the seat tracks themselves. All right, we're going to go ahead and flip this thing over. We're going to look for the little welds, and we're going to start drilling out the spot welds and uh, pushing the entire seat track back and re-welding it back in place. I went and I dotted all the places I saw spot welds. This is where we're going to have to drill out these welds. Uh, why I'm not drilling through the tracks and drilling through the floor? Well, this is thinner and easier to drill through. And on the top side, the metal is much thicker and you can't see the spot welds. Well, I got a service call that made me report to work. Uh, I had to go handle some stuff. So anyway, I had to park the chassis and get it out of the way, which was not such a bad thing. The uh, phosphoric acid did a good job of eating the rust in the places where I put it on. All along this lip, I poured a little bit up on here that I had some extra. Uh, I coated all up and around here. Coated all around this side and all the way back up to the Napoleon's hat. There's um, not a spot of rust that I can see all through here anymore. The only orange that you see in there is actually from when I laid the floor pan on there. A little bit of the coating from it chipped off. That's not going to be a big deal. Uh, otherwise, all that whiteness actually means that it got on down to the bare metal, and bare metal turns white once the phosphoric acid hits it. So what you're looking at here is actually a good thing. I'll wipe it down with a damp rag, and that usually gets all that white flaky residue off. And then anything that's stuck or bonded to the metal will stay, and that'll be ready for a coat of paint. Of course, I won't paint it until I get the pans welded in here. Once the pans are welded in, it'll be a very different story, and then we'll get a coat of paint on it. We got the seat tracks moved back about four or five inches. Now it's time to go ahead and strip off this orange paint that they're on these things. And usually this stuff comes off pretty easy. And on this side, you can see the paint stripper I've spread on it. It's began to get the paint bubbling. But the other one, for some reason, is not doing a damn thing to it. And there's a couple spots around the edges, but for the most part, that paint is just not letting go. I'm not sure what it's going to take. I'll just let it soak longer and see what happens. 
Well, it looks like it did loosen the paint up. It just wasn't bubbling like the other side was. Curious, very curious, but it's loose. This is good. It's going to need some more soaking. It might even need a second application to get the majority of it up. But no, it's it's definitely coming up. So this is this is not a bad thing. We're all right. We're in okay shape. You may see that there's still a little bit of orange on there. But uh, what we're looking at there, I'm just going to wire wheel off. Uh, it's just a bit of a haze. And after three applications of paint stripper, if it's not coming off, it's it's pretty well affixed. So you shouldn't have any problems with it peeling. Gonna let these dry up a bit and then we're gonna start welding. We've got the pans dropped back into place. They should be good to go. I'm gonna start spot welding them in place and afterwards we're gonna do that uh, wire wheeling. Then comes a coat of paint. Helps if the ground wires. complete everything's installed in there what we're gonna do real quick is we're gonna wire wheel the welds and just break up any of the uh, ash and whatever else is formed on there and then we're gonna acid dip it one more time that way it will seal up any of the bare metal that's exposed there now this that you see is actually not bare steel this is coated with zinc most likely so that's not gonna rust as we see it and the uh, phosphoric acid probably won't react with it at all except for the spots around the edges where it has burned up but most likely that's galvanized or zinc coated steel passenger side actually flash rusted it's supposed to have a zinc coating on it it's not supposed to do that driver side didn't so anyway I'm gonna give it an acid bath one more time then and let it sit a little while longer before we get that coat of paint on there well, it's the first time I have ever seen a floor pan flash rust after I left it out overnight. I mean, uh, it must have been excessively humid or something. I, I don't know why it would have done that. Either that or the zinc coating on it is substandard or poor quality. But that'll be no longer a problem because now it'll be covered in iron phosphate, which might as well be plated with zinc. So I just got to let it dry. It's sunny, so it shouldn't take too awfully long to dry up. Once that's dry, we'll give it a rub down with a damp rag and get up all the uh, loose residue and then throw a coat of paint on here. The pan is turning uh, a little green. I don't know what reaction with phosphoric acid would turn green. Uh, maybe there's a little bit of copper in there or something. I'll have to uh, do a little research and find out myself. I'm no Cody's lab, you guys. <laughs> anyway, looks good to me. I'm going to let it finish drying. I did hose it real quick to get off some of the phosphoric acid residue. If you uh, leave the residue on there, it's kind of sticky and paint will not stick to it. It'll actually just slow off. 
Um, in this case, the water will actually take the acid away, and then the water, of course, will dry, and it'll dry a lot faster. All the water dried off real nicely. I hit it with a compressor and waited a couple hours, and all the little droplets that were there I blew away and have since dried up. I hit a little trim in the edges, all the little hard to reach places. Usually I hit them with a brush. This time around I tried to use the uh, sprayer and I shot a real fine, real fine dot into those spots to make sure the paint flowed into them. The bottom is already done. That's already ready to go. I I'm probably going to put at least another coat, maybe two, onto it, but uh, it's got paint now. And I mean, it looks good see some pinholes from where I uh, moved the seat tracks back but that's okay I'm gonna put a little a bit of seam sealer in there but it looks good to me I'm gonna continue painting this Alright, that looks good. I call that the first coat and a half. <laughs> a few spots that I hit more than once. In particular around the seams. I want to get a little more in there. I want it to flow into the uh, the cracks and places where water could settle. But I think we're looking really good here. I've got to say that's looking pretty damn good. Oh yeah. needs about another coat this is after the second coat I still see some orange peel in a couple spots but, I mean it is a chassis <laughs> it doesn't need to look like glass but I'm happy with that alright I got my third and fourth coats on there it's a shame we've got so much pollen in the air but it's just a chassis it's not actually a top coat on a vehicle you're never really gonna see this but uh, <laughs> it sure is glossy. It's outrageously shiny. It's actually like a mirror. Unbelievably shiny. I'm gonna say I did pretty damn good on that one. <laughs> and that's how you restore a Volkswagen Beetle floor pan. If you like this video, you should subscribe. Make sure you like the video. If you don't like the video, then click you don't like the video. I'm okay with that too. I've got a Patreon account. So if you guys would like to tip me or throw me a couple bones now and then, check it out at uh, patreon.com, Duckman Cycles. Almost forgot to mention that I had to do some seam sealing through here. And this is an asphalt-based seam sealer, so it's it's tar by any other name. And you put on a nice rubber glove and you just pack it into the joint. And then tool it on in. Anywhere that you did a welding seam, pack it in real good. I even did it along here where I moved the seat track back. I got the old well holes because you can see light through a couple of them just a little bit. So those are packed in real nicely. Got that good. You do both sides. That was the bottom. And make sure you do the top also. Once again, along all of the weld seams, all through here, and then around this joint. And some people say they like to do this before they paint. I like to paint first, because the paint will go into that seam, it'll get wicked in. And then you would use the tar to then cover over that. So in case the tar should fall off, get chipped off, or just become damaged, hopefully the paint that's underneath will protect that seam. So I think this is pretty good. It's nice and shiny, that's for sure. Really shiny. It's me.